Greetings and welcome to another episode of LGR Thrifts. Nature is taking over my house and it appears that this is episode 42 of Thrifts. So yeah, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to go see if we can find the answer to life, the universe, and everything and all those kind of references. Let's go thrifting. Alright, on to this first Goodwill here that's been seeing a bunch of renovation, both outside and in, starting with this rather lovely sidewalk that's been installed by the local city. I'm sure that's just coincidence though, but yeah, the inside has been renovated as well, and yeah, check it out! New racks, new shelving, new registers, new floors. Yeah, there's a nice wood clad or wood laminate flooring going on. I very much approve. And it really just looks nice combined with all the new signage and other things that they've put up in the past, I don't know, five or six months. Just leads to the whole store looking a little bit friendlier, a little warmer. I like it. Unfortunately, though, as they were remodeling everything, they just cleared out the entire store's inventory and kind of started over, and at this point, it's not exactly good news when it comes to the electronics section. It's pretty much all just junk appliances and not much, really, that I'm interested in. I mean, it's a DVD recorder, who cares? One of the few items of interest was this guitar effects pedal. This is a FX75 stereo flanger. Don't know if that's any good, not my kind of thing, but you know, four bucks for someone. But yeah, same goes for the puzzles and board games, toy section. I mean, this just hasn't really been restocked yet. They haven't been opened again long enough to get a bunch of good donations yet. And uh, yeah, actually that face right there, that pretty much sums up my feelings. Speaking of feelings, oh my word, does this say what I think it does? <laughs> oh, it does. Oh, this is just sad. Will you marry my daddy? Oh my goodness, what happened here? And for that matter, what happened here, Harley? Giving away your Prince of Punk merchandise. Not that I know who that is. So anyway, over here to the books. I always like looking through here and seeing what kind of collections they've got. I did notice this sticking out from the crowd because it's not a book. It was in there with the books. Assassin's Creed, the director's cut edition. All I had was a digital version, so yeah, it's nice to have a box to put on the shelf. Alrighty, moving on to another Goodwill, and that's this one right here. And will you look at that? A couple of torsion pendulum clocks, and these appear to be working. This one's only six bucks. I mean, I, I didn't grab it. I always kind of want to. Maybe I'll go back and get it. I don't know. But yeah, this store is rather open compared to last time I was here as well. They got rid of a lot of shelves. I don't know if they're going to remodel here or what. Whatever the case may be, they do have a pretty decent selection of media over on the media shelving, including a ton of DVD box sets of all the boomers' favorite shows. And down here at the bottom, something I am much more interested in, a selection of PC games. This is a Half-Life 1 anthology. I already have that, but I didn't have this. I'd never even seen this before. Pinball Madness 2. It's in a big box, and I mean, really, the selection of games is pretty good. Got Bowls of Steel, Time Shock, Full Tilt 2, Addiction Pinball, and Pinball Builder. I own each of these individually, so I'm not going to get it, but still neat to see this collection. Yeah, let's see, over on the Electronicals, and this looks kind of cool. It's a Channel Master 8-track recorder and radio. Can't say I've seen this particular combo at Goodwill before, and I like that design. Over next to that was an AT&T 100 phone, a classic touch-tone version, really cheap plastic and everything, but what kind of drew me to this were these extra buttons over on the side. You have a mute redial and a couple switches where you can change the dialing mode and even the ringer. That's something I've never seen on one of these kind of phones before. And this thing too. I mean, I don't know, it's just the day for beige plastic devices, I suppose. This right here is an EZC69 time -a light I'm assuming this is some kind of a time clock thing here. It's got a buzzer and all that. Nope, it appears to be a timer for a dark room. Yeah, they still make them too. At least some kind of them. All right, moving on to another Goodwill down the road. And yeah, this one, let, let's skip back a bit. In fact, let's get back to January 21st, where I saw this site here, something I'd never seen before. Not only was there a long line of people just waiting to drop stuff off, but they had actually filled up the entire donation section of the store itself. And there were two large semi-truck trailers over there just set up for extra donations. And they were filling up really fast. And the reason I bring this up is because January 2019, I 
I don't know if you missed this little thing that kind of happened in the world of thrifting called the Marie Kondo effect. Yeah, there was this show on Netflix, ended up being kind of a, I don't know, out of nowhere to me, surprise hit, tidying up with Marie Kondo, you know, the whole sparking joy kind of thing and stuff. Anyway, it was really inspiring to a lot of people, and it turns out that Goodwills especially, across the country, were just inundated with tons more donations than usual. Some places up as high as 367% of an increase in donations compared to the same week the previous year. And there were two results of this. One is that there was a whole lot more just garbage being donated, and the other result was that there was also just a lot more people buying stuff up, which meant I wasn't actually able to find as much as you might think, because there were so many more people just browsing thrift stores over the past several months. Anyway, inside this particular store I ran across, oh hey Chewbacca, I ran across an MVC FD71 Sony Digital Mavica camera, and yeah, it was in the box, $15. This is not something that I'm looking for, but it was in pretty freaking great shape, so uh, yeah, and somebody bought it like the next day. <laughs> This thing, however, this did not sell for a while. In fact, I don't know if it ever sold. Maybe they just got rid of it. It's a Canon Image Runner copy fax machine thing. It was, yeah, a little larger than most office equipment that I run across at Goodwill. Yeah, I don't know. It just stood out for uh, how much it stood out. <laughs> anyway, over the, the glass case. Yeah, there's some games. Uh, games, I don't really, I don't, I don't want any of these. Did kind of want these though. They had this red table, uh, the table draped in like a red cloth, and yeah, look at this Technics stereo cassette deck, 631. I think that looks friggin' gorgeous. The meters, the piano keys, the switches and dials, everything, but yeah, $75, and it's not what you can get one for on eBay, so whatever. And this store also set up these rather lengthy bins just full of media at the front of the store. Just filled with VHS tapes and DVDs and actually quite a number of games in here too that were in DVD style cases, mostly for Xbox and PS2. And I've always been pretty fond of the Xbox so I ended up grabbing a number of games including Destroy All Humans, Destroy All Humans 2. Lego Star Wars the video game, Lego Star Wars 2, Star Wars Battlefront 2, Reckless, uh, the Yakuza missions, Super Monkey Ball Deluxe, and Fable. And they were like all complete, so yeah, I got them for just a couple bucks each. Okay, back to browsing. What is this tall wood grain thing? This is a <laughs> Corby Trouser Press. Oh my goodness. That sounds delightfully English. I don't know. A trouser Press? Maybe maybe that's just what it's called here too, but this seems to be a UK device. And over in the furniture, and <laughs> this, uh, this bear pillow appears to have melted into the couch. It was amusing at the time, what can I say? I don't know. Anyway, it's just a pillow. Oh my goodness, look at this. This is a RCA television from the 80s, I assume. I don't know, it's a classic console style TV. They were charging a ridiculous $50 though, which is just silly. I mean, I know it's big, but you pretty much can't give these things away. It did come with the remote control. That was kind of nice, but around back, this was what made it super tempting. I mean, look at this. You have multiple inputs and outputs. It's all composite. In fact, the one that I have at home like this is just RF only, made in February, 1990. All right, let's see, what is this? Convert your dot 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 to JPEG. That's a film digitizer for slides and film negatives, 35 millimeter stuff. I don't know, it was just a convert your dot 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 that <laughs> got my attention. Ooh, handsome toaster. Oh, hey, I remember these things. <laughs> I had one of the smaller ones. Yeah, this is an Ideazon Z-Board. It was actually the base, a bunch of them in the box. But the whole idea was that you could drop these Z-Board interfaces in there and they were kind of tailor-made to certain games and applications. I might have to cover one of these kind of things sometime, but I still have mine, I don't need these. All right, ample amount of electronics and yes, I want this. What we got here is a Unisonic 890C well used by the looks of the <laughs> cheat sheet kind of taped to the top there, but otherwise in pretty good condition. And yeah, I powered it on and it seems to be great. The display looks really good. And in fact, it's actually pretty similar to another Unisonic calculator that I plan to cover an LGR in the future that's actually way cooler than this. But eh, this will be kind of nice to have and put alongside that one just for comparison's sake. Hey, got a good number of CRT TVs scattered around the store, and a bunch of them on just this one bottom shelf here. Can't say anything stands out necessarily, but yeah, I'm just happy that this store continues to carry CRTs. 
Over in the puzzles and board games, and this got my attention just because memories. Here we've got a Spirograph. Uh, quite an old one, actually. It says Kenner's new Spirograph. But yeah, it's old. And check out this Spirograph pattern guide on the underside of the top of the box. I used to love Spirographs. Or mine was from like the early 90s, but still. I think this is why I ended up liking Winamp visualizers so much. And around the corner with more of the puzzles, and this is a, this is not a puzzle, this is Enigma Pinball, or really just the Enigma Pinball Table from Epic Pinball by Epic Mega Games. So I've got this and like all of the other standalone pinball tables, all by BNN Software. You used to find these things just stacked up at endless thrift stores and everywhere. So I don't need them, but people find them all the time and still offer them to me. So uh, don't offer these to me anymore, I have them. I'm not getting this one either. And this has been your LGR Big Box Collecting PSA. Okay, over in the keyboards, and here's a keyboard that, uh, okay, that one looks good. What is this? All right, so these are not clicky keys, but they do feel interesting. And hey, it's got an AT connector on the end here. What is this? This is a BTC5339. This is interesting. I've never come across a keyboard with this particular mechanism. This uses springs and plastic and whatnot, but Underneath is actually a foam and foil setup, and it feels weird. In fact, I'm sure the foam probably needs to be replaced because it, I don't know, it doesn't quite feel right to me, but interesting keyboard. I'm going to grab it. Moving on to the last Goodwill for this episode. It's a nice spring day at the moment, so let's leave a nice little spring offering to the Lucky Rock and get inside. And right inside the front doors, I noticed this little guy immediately on the shelves, and <laughs> I've never seen anything like this. This is a mid-1950s device by Radiart, and it's an indoor rotor control unit for radio antennas. Totally out of my realm of expertise, but man, it looks interesting. Speaking of old radio stuff, there was a number of that in the store today, such as this Grundig radio right here. You got shortwave, longwave, and all sorts of good stuff on there, and I like the little note to remember that it needs a minute to warm up. Yeah, it's a tube radio. That's how it goes. Pretty friggin' tempted, to be honest, but $200, I mean, <laughs> This was also pretty up there in terms of price, but absolutely awesome. I mean, look at it. It's a house on Haunted Hill. Apparently an original theater copy of one of the posters for it. Excellent with the skeleton holding the lady there. And yeah, it's just great. Vincent Price, man. And over past the couches holding blue bunnies with caved in noses were these two rather large lampshades. <laughs> I don't know, I guess, I mean, I don't know. They were just big. They, they were big and fabric and uh, they amused me. So I looked at them. I also took a look at this as a Yamaha PSR3 keyboard for just $4. That's a nifty looking little machine. All right, over to some shelves and well, what in the world is this? You use email, they don't. Enter presto, email and photos without a PC. All right, I'm interested. What is presto? Uh, well, here's the thing. This is uh, apparently an internet connected printer. I mean, you know, in a dial up sense. So you can send emails to this presto mail service and then that will send it out to a printer and then the printer will just print out stuff immediately to old people. <laughs> I don't believe it would work anymore considering it relies on this service, but yeah, never heard of this. So that's kind of cool to learn about. Checking out the junk section and there's a bunch of junk and then there's this, a certificate of authenticity for a young girl's dream. Yeah, that's a Norman Rockwell piece. Apparently this went alongside a limited edition American dream collection. There was no sign of this thing in the store, just this certificate. So that's kind of unfortunate. Anyway, above that though, I ran across a few different floppy disk holders here, including one that stood out for <laughs> honestly how ugly it was. I mean, look at this thing. It has this orange textured surface that's, I don't know, kind of appealing. It's weird. Yeah, I'm gonna grab it. I don't know, it's needing a disk box anyway. Mmm, creepy dolls. And a turntable creeping along on the bottom here is a BSR 25CX McDonald. $35, uh, not really in the worst shape I've ever seen in a Goodwill, that's for sure. And up above that was this rather interesting collection of, uh, I don't even know what, I guess like Western kind of Americana characters here cast into porcelain or something. And a number of these things were actually whiskey containers. <laughs> the, the things people collect, right? Ah, uh, what am I talking about? I collect nasty looking disc cases. There was quite an assortment of media on the media racks today, and actually quite a few of these reel-to-reel -reel tapes here too. 
all of them being 7-inch reels, and they were all blanks, or at least they were blanks. They've all been recorded onto with who knows what, just a large variety of things actually. And I mean an absolute variety of stuff. I mean, mostly it just looks like they just took their favorite songs and records and put them on here. I didn't see anything that seemed to be labeled with something that was actually like unique. No lost recordings of Johnny Cash or the Beatles or anything that I could figure out, but also on the shelf was one lonely Super Nintendo game. This is Nigel Mansell's World Championship. Four bucks, not something I'm looking for, so, you know. I did happen to notice all of these over here, though. These uh, compact disc containers, or really they're magazines for Pioneer multi-CD changers. And they were actually all filled with CDs. In fact, over near the back of the store, on another shelf, I found a ton more of these. Again, all filled with CDs. And it seemed to be the same handwriting as those tapes. So I'm assuming somebody just had like all their compilation of records and stuff put onto tapes and then CDs at one point and they all ended up here at once. <laughs> all right, well, this is a first for Goodwill anyway for me. That is a Roomba vacuum cleaner just hanging out there. I'm assuming it does not work. Kind of weird to see these show up at Goodwill now. Over on another shelf, we had a variety of Pioneer audio equipment. I just like this set because it was all silver and they all matched, missing a bunch of knobs though. And over with the TVs and computer monitors, <laughs> there's this double sight monitor. I'd never seen something like this before. I mean, sure, dual monitor setups, that's one thing, but this appears to be just like two four by three aspect ratio screens kind of stuck together. And then there's two interfaces in the back so you can get a dual monitor setup, but just in one unit. An intriguing dual display solution. There's a couple of VHS camcorders just hanging around here being neglected, but then I saw this beast. And would you look at that? This is a Learjet. Well, not a, not a jet, but you know, it's from the company. This is a Learjet Stereo 8. And in case you weren't aware, yes, the Stereo 8 track was very much the Learjet Corporation's thing. Not only found inside of Mr. Bill Lear's jets, but also as just standalone units for the home like this. And this one in particular also came with a radio tuner, as well as a record player in there, and eh, they were charging like 150 bucks for it. So that's a nope, but still a first for LGR thrifts. And then finally, oh, struck a bit of personal gold right here. This is a Sega Game Gear in the box for $12. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 bundle. I've been looking for one of these since I don't even know how long. I didn't even check to see all what was in here. I just got it and bolted to the car to check it out. And yeah, look at this. There was a bag full of ads and documentation and manuals as well as a whole slew of games, adapters, a carrying case, and of course, the Game Gear itself. Largely a selection of puzzle games, and gambling games, and you got Jeopardy, X-Men, Sonic 2, and Pac-Man. Yeah, it has a decent selection, whatever, 12 bucks, can't really complain. And that is it for episode 40 friggin' 2 of LGR Thrifts. Took a lot longer than I anticipated to put this episode together, but as a good selection of stuff, we've got eight Xbox original games, an ugly, awesome disc holder, a rather handsome Unisonic calculator, of course the Sega Game Gear, that PC copy of Assassin's Creed, directors, whatever, and that interesting keyboard. Yeah, man, not bad. I'm pretty happy with it. Well, except for the Game Gear, <laughs> it didn't work. I mean, it powered on, there was some sound, but the screen had like no backlight and what was there underneath just looked like garbage. So I assume bad caps at the very least. And really I wanted to replace the screen with a McWill mod anyway. So what I ended up doing was sending it over to Retro Hacks as a website that I was recommended for getting a restoration done and upgrades on a Game Gear. And Will there, he did a really, really great job. I mean, it's not a simple thing to just swap out and put this nice LC CD and stuff in there for the McWill mod, but he did that and replaced all the caps and just made everything like new and well here it is. I've got myself a fantastic Game Gear. It's got a pretty nice shell. Honestly, it's not in terrible shape at all and that screen looks fantastic. I mean better than it ever has really. Vibrant and awesome and clear and just, I mean it's just a nice upgrade to the Game Gear. Highly recommend the McWill mod. Definitely been enjoying some Sonic the Hedgehog and Columns. More so Columns. <laughs> this is actually a nice little system to have for retro puzzle games. I don't know. The Game Gear has just always intrigued me ever since I was a kid and it's really cool to finally have one that's just, ah, it's just an enjoyable thing. 
and I hope that this episode was an enjoyable thing. Thank you for your patience and also for sending in your thrifting finds over the past however many months it's actually been since the last episode. I'm going to try my very best to come up with enough footage for an episode sooner than later uh, in the future. But, you know, it, again, it's all just luck. So thank you very, very much for sending in all of your own finds and continuing to support thrifts for as long as you have. I'll continue doing this as long as I can. And as always, thank you very much for watching. <laughs>